Hello, I'm Kristen Chu with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition D, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 3rd. The city, through its port commission, owns a 28-acre waterfront area located south of AT&T Park across McCovey Cove. Known as Mission Rock, the site consists mostly of Pier 48 and Seawall Lot 337. After engaging in a multi-year community planning process, the port adopted a vision statement for mixed-use development of Mission Rock and selected a developer to create a project consistent with that statement. Proposition D would increase the height limit of up to 10 of the 28 acres in Mission Rock. A yes vote means you want to increase the height limit for 10 of the 28 acres of the Mission Rock site from one story to height limits ranging from 40 to 240 feet and make it city policy to encourage the development provided that it includes eight acres of parks and open space and housing of which at least 33% is affordable for low and middle income households. A no vote means that you don't want to increase the height limit or adopt the city policy. I'm here with Matt O'Grady, CEO of San Francisco Parks Alliance and a proponent of Proposition D. We're also joined by John Gollinger, an environmental attorney, waterfront advocate, an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. It's a pleasure. I'd like to start with some opening remarks. Matt? Thank you, Kristen. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so much of San Francisco's eastern waterfront, from the ballpark all the way south to the county line, has been moribund for 40 years or more. We've got decaying piers, empty warehouses, empty sites. Some of them are contaminated. There's even a Superfund site. But that's changing in a very big way. For the past decade, the San Francisco Parks Alliance has been spearheading an effort called the Blue Greenway, where we're partnering with all of the property owners, the government agencies, the communities all along that waterfront to re-envision that waterfront and put together an unbroken 13-mile long string of parks, open spaces, biking paths, hiking trails to open up that waterfront for the public's use and for responsible development. The Blue Greenway starts with Mission Rock, which is the site that we're looking at here. Uh, this parking lot will be converted into eight, acre, eight acres of open space, including the entire waterfront, a new promenade around the pier, balanced with housing and jobs. It's a balanced approach that the Parks Alliance supports. Thanks, Matt. John, your opening remarks? Well, that all sounds great. That's not what Prop D is about. The reason that the Sierra Club and environmental groups oppose Prop D is just like 8 Washington. It raises height limits on the waterfront for tall towers that block the beautiful bay for everybody but those that get to live or work there. Um, 8 Washington folks, remember, raise height limits up to 136 feet for a luxury tower. Prop D raises height limits for 11 towers. Five of them are taller than 8 Washington. Three of them are almost twice as tall. Um, taller than Fontana Towers, which blocks the northern part of the waterfront. All the buildings in Prop D are taller than Pier 70, which all of us supported last year. So the reason that, that environmental groups are opposing Prop D as much as we want the, all the parks that Mr. O'Grady works for and talks about is that there's a right way and a wrong way to develop our waterfront. That's the history of how we've turned our waterfront, unlike so many others, into an open and beautiful place. And yes, we need to build. We need to do it right. So we want to send this development back to the drawing board, just like at Washington. This developer will come back with something better. And the way to get that is by voting no on Prop D. Thanks, John. Let's get into the questions. Critics say there are no guarantees that the plans for open space or setbacks at Water's Edge will be enforced. Can you, each of you respond to that assertion, starting with John? Sure. I mean, it's really the, the height of the project that is the problem. You know, 11 towers, uh, three of them are 240 feet, and two of them are 190 feet. At, you know, close to the waterfront, they lower the buildings to 120 or 90 feet. That still is going to block the bay for most people. Um, most of the buildings are not affordable housing. Yes, there's some affordable housing. Most of the buildings um, are offices for private corporations. Yes, they want the penthouse views, and they'll get them. Uh, or luxury condos or luxury apartments. Um, and so our concern, yes, we want uh, as much setback from the bay as possible. But if you build 120 feet close to the bay, that's still going to uh, provide um, very little view to anyone other than the, those who are inside the buildings, which isn't most people. Great. Matt? Well, a couple of points, Kristen. Uh, first off, the legislation does clearly mandate that the open space would be included in, uh, in the development. Uh, it's really important for us to remember that uh, the port of San Francisco, just like all of the ports in the state of California, are owned by the people of the state. And we, the people of California, have delegated the authority to run those ports to the local governments. In San Francisco, we have the port of San Francisco. 
we, the people of California, in our infinite wisdom, have also mandated that all of the ports have to operate on their own means. They have to earn their own way. We don't put any tax dollars into running our ports. For all the other ports in California, they've done pretty well by getting into containerized shipping. Well, we lost that business 40 years ago in San Francisco, so we've had to be creative and find some new ways to finance the maintenance and the operations of our port. And the way we've done that is through a tricky balancing act between providing open space and access to the waterfront for the people combined with responsible development. The proposal for Mission Rock, which is one of the largest undeveloped site that the port has left, we think is a responsible uh, finely tuned balance of that development and that open space. The only way to get that development is to go up. Matt, do you have any concerns about this ballot measure setting a precedent for height of new development in San Francisco? It doesn't set any real precedents in terms of overall height. We have buildings that are taller, we have buildings that are shorter, we have other parts of the waterfront that have been developed in different ways. We have other parts of the waterfront that will uh, not be developed at all. Uh, nearby, we're going to have the first actual beach for tow access to the water on the eastern shoreline for the first time in decades. So looking at any one particular site and saying that it sets a precedent in this instance, I don't think that really applies. John, do you have any concerns? That's exactly what's going to happen. I mean, the, uh, this group and others who oppose the very ballot measure that required this project to go to a vote, Prop B last year, which required voters, not the people who run the port, not the bureaucrats who are too close to the developers to weigh in on height increases. Um, Exactly with, with the Washington, they made the same pitch. It's a one-off, it's a small project compared to other tall buildings, but look, we're, we're not saying don't, big t don't build tall buildings in the financial district and downtown. We're saying our waterfront is a special place. You know, this site is 100% public land. All of it belongs to all the people. And uh, what happens here is gonna be there for the rest of our lives, our children's lives, and probably our grandkids' lives. Um, you bet, if the height limits go up to 240 feet, you know, that's 100 feet taller than eight Washington would have been. Um, you bet the next developer is going to be right in line saying, well, you did it there. Why can't you do it here? And before you know it, we're going to get Miami Beach, which has tall buildings blocking the waterfront for all those uh, except those who get to live inside them. And that's not most people. And, the, water, you know, the waterfront really is a place to recreate, and we want to make sure it stays open to everyone. The parks are great, and we'll get them with a project that is reasonable and makes sense for a waterfront if we, shoot the, if we reject this one. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have time for closing remarks. Sure. Um, you know, the reason that Sierra Club, San Francisco Tomorrow, the Coalition for San Francisco Neighborhoods, which represents neighborhood groups across the city, this, those same groups that opposed 8 Washington and, and demanded that voters get the right to vote on these height limits, the reason they all oppose Prop D, not because it's a bad developer, not because there are bad groups behind it, but because we need to demand the best for San Francisco's waterfront. Um, the best is not raising height limits up to 240 feet for 11 towers, five of which are taller than 8 Washington. Um, the best is a project that provides um, all affordable housing, or at least as much affordable housing as we can possibly get, not mostly private offices. Uh, the reason those groups and I oppose this measure is because it's on public land. We want to make sure it's open to most people. And the reason these groups oppose Prop D is that the very parks that Matt talks about would be shadowed by the big buildings they're creating. That's not going to help anyone enjoy the waterfront. Great. Matt? So we, the people of California, have mandated that our parks, uh, that our parts pay for themselves. Uh, in San Francisco, we do that through this fine balance between parks and open space and access to our waterfront combined with responsible development. Uh, the Mission Rock uh, development is uh, a striking about as good a balance uh, in that regard as we could possibly hope for. It's a, a proposal that's been supported by leaders all across the political spectrum from Mayor Ed Lee to, to John Avalos and Art Agnos. Uh, it's been eight years in the making. Let's build the thing. So the Parks Alliance says vote yes on Measure D. Great. Thank you both for your comments and your time. We hope this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 3rd. Thank you for watching.